Hi, everyone. My name is Abhishek Das. This is joint work with Satvik Kotur, who is an equal first author on this paper. Tasks at the intersection of vi vision and language have gained a lot of recent prominence. This includes image captioning, where the goal is to predict a one-sentence description of the image, or visual question answering, where given an image, a, a question, the goal is to predict a natural language answer. Or more recently, visual dialogue, where given an image, a dialogue history consisting of a sequence of question-answer pairs and a follow-up question, the goal is to predict a free-form natural language answer. And there have been a bunch of nice work in this space showing impressive results at each of these tasks. And this has been made possible by the availability of large-scale data sets specifically made for each of these tasks and powerful neural models trained on these data sets. And this has sort of become a recipe in our community where for every new task that we may want to propose, we can put in money and collect a data set and train these powerful models on this data set and expect to see nice looking results. Not only is this intellectually dissatisfying and expensive, this also suffers from a number of additional problems. Um, yes, not only is this intellectually dissatisfying and expensive, this also suffers from a number of additional subtle problems. Let's look at this in the context of visual dialogue. So we collected a large-scale data set on Mechanical Turk by pairing two humans to talk to each other about an image. We then trained deep models on this data set and saw fairly nice results. But like I said, this suffers from a number of subtle problems. For instance, during training, at every round of dialogue, conditioned on the image, a dialogue history, and a follow-up question, the model predicts an answer. However, in the next round, this answer is thrown away, and the ground truth question and answer are appended to the dialogue history, and a follow-up question is asked. And this gets repeated at every round. So the model never gets to steer conversation and doesn't get to see the future consequences of its utterances during training. Another problem of this recipe is that given an image and a question like, how's the weather, the, there is only one ground truth answer in the data set. However, there can be multiple plausible ways of correctly answering that question. But these are artificially treated as incorrect because they're outside the data set. So in an attempt to fix some of these problems, in this paper, we propose Guess Which, an image guessing game between Qbot and Abot. Qbot is a questioning agent and is blindfolded, so it cannot see images. Abot is an answering agent and has access to the secret image. And the task is for Qbot and Abot to talk to each other for a fixed number of rounds in natural language, at the end of which Qbot makes a guess of what it thinks the secret image is. And this sort of training framework has several advantages and solves some of the problems I mentioned earlier. So these agents are trained via self-talk, which means that we only need a data set of images without paired human dialogue data, and so we have access to virtually infinite data. Training and evaluation is goal-based, so we bypass all the issues of natu evaluating natural language generation and can evaluate performance on the downstream task of image guessing. And dialogue is agent-driven, so these agent agents get to see a much larger space of utterances during training, and they learn to deal with the consequences of their actions. And the above in indicates a move from supervised learning on static data, data sets to these environments where these agents now have agency and can take actions towards their goal. Let's look at the framework in more detail. So we have two agents, Qbot and Abot. The environment consists of a line lineup of images over which Qbot makes a guess and a secret image that Abot has access to. The action space for Qbot and Abot are a question and answer that they respectively generate at every round. And Qbot additionally makes a prediction of the image feature vector conditioned on the dialog. And the state for Qbot and Abot consists of the dialog history up till that point, and Abot additionally has the image in its dialog state. Let's dive into the model internals. So at every round of di dialogue, conditioned on the dialogue history, Qbot generates a question. The question gets passed over to Abot. Abot encodes the image with a VGG16 convolutional neural network, the question with an LSTM, and has a hierarchical uh, history encoder, which at the lowest level independently encodes each round of dialogue history to generate fact representations, and at a higher level combines these fact representations to develop a unified representation of the dialogue history. Conditioned on this dialogue history encoding, Abot generates an answer. The answer gets passed over to Qbot. 
Qbot embeds the question and answer in its fact embedding and has a, updates its history and has a feature regression network that uh, makes a prediction of the image feature vector, which is just a fully connected layer from the dialogue history encoding. And the reward for Qbot Nabot is derived from this prediction of the image feature vector. These models are pre-trained with supervision on the visual dialogue data set and fine-tuned with reinforce, which is a policy gradient training algorithm. And it takes a couple other things to get this to work. So the first is curriculum learning. So we, when we transition from supervised to reinforcement learning, there's a discrete change in learning landscape. So the idea is that we want to gently hand over control to reinforcement learning. And the way we do this is that initially, these agents are trained via supervision from the visual dialogue data set for all rounds of dialogue. And, and then we gradually transition one round at a time to policy gradient training until all rounds are being trained via policy gradients. And the other crucial bit to get this to work is reward shaping. So the idea is that if there is a single scalar reward coming at the end of the entire dialogue, it's too weak and delayed a signal for these agents to learn something meaningful. And hence, we have improvement-based intermediate rewards. So what we do is, at every round, Qbot makes a prediction of the image feature vector, and the reward essentially measures how much Qbot's guess, Qbot's guess of the image improves a condition on that round of question answering. And how do we evaluate these models? We, uh, given the secret image that Abot has access to, it's coming from a test set of 10,000 images. We extract FC7 vectors for each of these images and compute distance from the predicted uh, feature, ve feature vector to each of these ground truth FC7 vectors, sort the images based on this distance, and compute the rank of the ground truth image, which in this case is two. What we see is that the supervised pre-trained agents get a best mean rank of 730 out of 10,000, and the RL agents get a best rank of 580. And this indicates a difference of 150 in rank of ground truth image. And here are some qualitative results. So here I'm, sh here I'm showing the image along with its caption and dialogue between Qbot and Abot. So in the case of supervised pre-trained agents, dialogue tends to be extremely repetitive. So for example, here Qbot asks what color is his shirt twice, and then later asks what color are his shoes, to which it gets the same response every time. And here's what dialogue looks like for the RL agents. So what color is his skateboard? It's hard to tell, but I think it's black. So even though the agent is trying to convey uncertainty, it's pretty detailed in its response. Is he wearing helmet? Yes. Is he wearing knee pads? No, no knee pads. Is it day or night? It's daytime. Is it sunny? It's bright out, but I see no shadows, so I cannot tell, and so on. And so the dialogue between these RL agents is a lot more image discriminative and consists of longer utterances. And it's important to note that we didn't hand engineer this behavior into our agents. This sort of emerges in this image guessing game simply to succeed at this game. So all of the earlier results were after pre-training with supervision on, on the visual dialogue data set. We also have an experiment in the paper where we initialize these agents with ungrounded vocabularies and train via RL from scratch. And what we observe is that with the right checks and balances, these agents learn to encode semantic concepts into these discrete symbols. Follow-up work on this experiment is available in Southwick's EMLP paper. So to summarize, we introduce goal-driven training of visual question answering and dialogue agents. These agents are trained via self-talk, so they have access to virtually infinite data. Training and evaluation is goal-based, so we can evaluate performance on the downstream task of image guessing. And dialogue is agent-driven, so these agents learn to deal with the consequences of their actions. And so we propose end-to-end -end learning from pixels to multi-agent, multi-round dialogue to game reward. And the above indicates a move from supervised learning on static data sets to these environments where agents now have agency and can take actions towards their goals. Code, pre-trained models, and the visual dialogue data set are all going to be available on visualdialogue.org. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. Are there any questions? And I want to remind you that you could ask questions from either Perla, Grande, and uh, Darsena from either one of the conference halls. Hello. So I'm curious as to how the sequence of questions is generated. Um, the work of Don Giman generates that by effectively generating the question that reduces the uncertainty the most uh, given a model for the scene. 
And that allows, in a sense, to try to generate the optimal sequence of questions that produces the best interpretation of the scene. So in this particular case, how are the optimal questions uh, obtained? So um, during training, we are sampling uh, from both these uh, language models, the QBOT and the ABOT. And during inference, we're doing beam search. But then uh, the idea is that if we, if we are optimizing for this down, downstream task of image guessing, then these agents learn to uh, put higher mass to this image, image discriminative utterances from each side. So does that answer your question? I think it answers in terms of how it's implemented, but not in terms of what is the objective. So the objective is this image guessing game. And they're optimizing for improvement in QBOT's guess of the image conditioned on every round of question answering. Thank you. Yeah. Question here. Um, so why do you think the uh, uh, error rate kind of gets worse over time as the dialogue gets longer? Yes, yeah, so that, that's a good question. So what happens is that the caption is a, is a big source of information. And so as these agents move away from the caption, uh, the, the supervised pre-trained agents uh, get a lot worse, whereas the RL fine-tuned agents, even though they don't get better, they don't necessarily get a lot, like they, uh, they try to almost maintain performance at that level. So at, the, at round two to three, they improve, and after that, they sort of try to maintain performance at that level. They don't get as worse as the uh, supervised pre-trained agents. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.